Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Today we're starting our four-part lab about identifying and separating two food coloring dyes that have been mixed together. So I'm going to be using these F, D, and C dyes, of which there are really only seven. F, D, and C stands for food, drink, and cosmetic, and so these are the seven non-toxic dyes that are allowed to be used in food, drink, and cosmetic products in the United States. I'm going to be dissolving some of these powders in water to start off so that you'll have something to work with. I'm going to have each of the seven have its own separate bottle, and then you will have a mixture of two of them together. So this video is going to cover just part one, how to use a spectrophotometer to identify which two dyes have been mixed by seeing what colors of light they absorb versus the colors of light absorbed by each individual separate die on its own. So to start off, what I need to do is take each of the solid powder forms of the dyes and dissolve them into water. I'm going to do that so that they're all the same concentration when comparing mass and volume. And so for each, I'm going to put a glass beaker on the balance, zero it out, and I'm going to add 0.13 grams of the powdered food dye. I'm then going to fill up the beaker to 130 milliliters, stir it to completely dissolve the solid powder, and then put it into one of these bottles. For the mixture, it's going to have not the full 0 0.130 grams of each of two food colorings, but it's going to have half of each. I'm going to start with blue two. So these are all going to be the same concentration to two significant figures. So I wanted to get 0 0.13 and this one is at 0 0.134. So I'm going to aim for 0 0.13 something for the remainder of them. And there we have our first one, blue two. I'm going to create the other six pure samples in that same way. And finally, an eighth, one last one, that is going to be a mixture, half of one and half of another that you are going to find out on your own. So here I've got all seven of the pure samples mixed up, as well as the mixture here. There are two reds, red three and red 40. There are two blues called blue one and blue two. There are two yellows called yellow five and yellow six, and there's a green called green three. They're all sitting on top of diagrams that show their molecular structure. The mixture we'll find out in a little bit as we test the pure samples and compare it to the mixture in spectrophotometry, or what colors of light each of these will allow to pass through a solution of it, or which colors of light get absorbed. Now for this part of the lab, these are the things that you'll need. You'll need your samples of the pure dyes. You'll need your mixture, some Kim wipes. Nine of these, these are called cuvettes. The reason you have nine would be seven for the pure samples, one for your mixture, and one needs to be pure water, along with nine caps, nine transfer pipettes that are disposable, some Kim wipes to wipe fingerprints off of the cuvettes, and a spectrophotometer. We're going to be using the Vernier SpectraViz spectrophotometers today. And lastly, a laptop that has either the software for Vernier Spectral Analysis or Logger Pro. Next, I'll show you how to get each cuvette set up so that you will be able to run them through the spectrophotometer. Now, the spectrophotometers are very sensitive, and so having these undiluted 
directly into the cuvette and directly into the spectrophotometer would make it go off the chart. And so we're going to use very little of these and fill the rest with water so that they will be dilute and we will get better results on the spectrophotometer. So what I'm going to start with is two drops of each using a transfer pipette, filling the rest with water, and then having one blank. Note that the cuvettes have a ridged side and smooth sides. Two ridged sides across from each other and two smooth sides across from each other. That's going to come up in a little bit. It's important to keep track of which cuvette is which, so as I prepare them, I'm going to set them in front of the sample. Now you don't want to fill them completely to the top or you'll make a mess when you put the cap on. Notice I put in five drops for that for the yellow six and I'm going to try to be consistent with that. Five drops for all the remainders. And there we go. Now it's time to set up and turn on the spectrophotometer. Now I'm going to show you how to set up and run the spectrophotometer, the SpectroViz from Vernier Technology. Each kit comes with the SpectroViz, a USB cord, and a power cord. If you're going to plug it into your computer, you do not need the power cord. The power cord is if this were going to connect through Bluetooth to a device not hardwired. Note that you can have Logger Pro open before or after you plug it into your computer's USB port. It will auto-recognize what's going on and set it up regardless. What you need to note here is the white arrow here is showing that this is where light passes through. This is the path that the light takes. What this does is it shines light through a sample and it has a detector which will measure how much light is able to go through. That percent transmittance is then turned into an absorbance. It figures out how much light was absorbed. So it measures how much light goes through, but it will calculate and graph it if you ask it to, to instead graph how much light was absorbed for each color that it shines through. Now that we've got this going, you take one cuvette at a time, starting with your blank. The Kim wipes, you wipe them down, especially the smooth sides. You want these to not be wet, and you want them to not have fingerprints, because your fingerprints could interfere with the light path. The smooth sides need to be in line with the light path. When you have your blank in, you're going to hit collect. And this is only for the first time it's gonna do this. It's going to need to warm up. So it will take 90 seconds to warm up. It will give you the option to say finish calibration when it's ready. And when you click finish calibration, you must have your blank in. At that point, it will be calibrated and you're ready to go one sample at a time. So now that it's warmed up, we hit the finish calibration and it does tell you to have a blank cuvette. It'll tell you how long it needed to scan to integrate. It says warm up complete and you say okay.
Now it might not look like it's doing anything, but notice it is collecting data. The stop button is available for you to hit. There is a line down here, so this is showing how much light is being absorbed by the water. So it should be zero, and that's why you calibrate it, so that it knows where that line for zero should be. So at this point, I'm going to put in my first sample, yellow six. Now if this happens where the line is going off the chart, it means that it's too concentrated. And what you'll do, because it's really important to see the shape and to see where those peaks are, what their wavelength is, you're going to pour half of this out and fill it back in with water. And that's gonna bring the entire curve down so that you'll be able to see the actual shape and the peaks. So now we can actually see the shape of the absorbance for yellow five, and this is where we would want to hit stop. Now at this point, to get ready to do the next one in line, which is for me, green three, though it doesn't matter what order you do them in, I'm going to double click on latest, and I'm going to call this data set what diet was, yellow six, so that I can keep track of them. Now, the next time I hit collect, it's going to start another data set and it's going to save this yellow six. I want to store my lightest run and then switch cuvettes. This one definitely off the chart, so I'm going to need to pour this out and water it down. And finally, this has been watered down enough for green three that it is going to be within range. So I'm going to hit stop and double click on the word latest so that I can rename this. And notice though it's not showing, it is saving each trial. Hey, so I've collected all my data now, including the mixture. They're all graphed on top of each other, which makes it a little bit confusing. You can't tell which line is which. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. First, you want to make sure to smash that save button. Now what you're going to do is if you right click on the background of the graph, it's going to give you graph options and you can change what is being graphed. You can change which data sets there are so you can compare them better. You'll always want to keep your mixture up and then you'll go through each known die one at a time to see which peaks in the mixture are being accounted for by which dyes were in them. While you're here, you might as well title your graph as well. And here we go. This is just the mixture. And so what you want to do, in addition to having this graph saved to include in a write-up, is you want to hover over and figure out where the peaks are, what wavelengths the peaks appear for this. So using the examine function, you can hover over where the peaks are and it will tell you a wavelength. So I know that the peaks for this mixture occur at a wavelength of 530.5 nanometers and a wavelength of 613.0 nanometers. So what I'm looking for are two different dyes that would account for those two peaks. One would have the first peak and one would have the second peak. So one at a time I'm going to go through. First is yellow six, and you see yellow six, the peak does not match any of these. And so I'm going to try the others. Green three is no match. Red 40 also is not a match. Now red three seems like it is going to be part of this mixture. 
though the heights are different because the concentrations were slightly different when I was pouring out and watering down the cuvettes, the peaks are at the same wavelength, and that's what's key here. So it seems very clear that red 3 is one of the dyes in this mixture. Blue 2 seems like it matches up very well to the other peak, and so it seems at this point that we can pretty well say that the mixture was red 3 and blue 2, but we're going to double check with the others just to make sure. This is blue 1, very similar, but off from that peak. And last, just to be complete, yellow five, very far off, and so not part of this mixture. So what I'm going to do now is leave the mixture up, but then put the two that I think it is in the mixture up side by side to show that they add together to create this mixture curve. So here we have it, very clear proof that the overall mixture that I tested is a combination of red three and blue two. The next couple of parts of this lab are going to be about what we do now with this mixture. How can we separate it? Part two is going to be about doing paper chromatography to figure out what solvents would work best. And part three is going to be about actually separating these and getting pure samples out of each of these dyes using column chromatography. Last, part four is gonna be bringing those isolated samples back and seeing if they match up and if we really did separate them completely. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you're successful in this as well. You're gonna have different mixtures from this, but I know that you can do it. I'll see you in class.